Welcome to lesson number 23 on probability. And in this lesson, we study the transformation of a random variable. Suppose we have a random variable x with a probability density function f of x and CDF capital F x of little x. Now the question here is if you have a transformation of the random variable x, let's say x square, and you call that transformed random variable, random variable y, then what's the PDF of the random variable y? Another example is if you have a function of the random variable x, maybe e to the x, okay, and you set that to be equal to the random variable y, the question is what's the PDF of y? In general, if the random variable x is transformed using the transforming function g of x, so if y is equal to g of x, then what's the PDF of y? That is, what is fy of little y? What is that equal to? So I'm going to assume for this lesson that the random variable x is a continuous random variable. We first consider the case where g of x is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, g of x is a one-to-one -one function. If g of x is a one-to-one -one function, in fact, I'm gonna look at that in two different scenarios where g of x is a one-to-one -one function and it's also an increasing function. The second scenario I want to look at is g of x is a one-to-one -one function and also a decreasing function. So if we have an increasing function, something like this, if this is x, if this is y, an increasing function g of x, g of x is a one-to-one -one function, so it should have an inverse. It's an increasing function, Therefore, the inverse of an increasing function is also an increasing function. If I have a point y, let me use a different color, y right there. If I have a point y there, I can have a mapping so that the corresponding value on the x-axis, okay, that is mapped to the value y as g inverse of y. Therefore, if I want to find the CDF of the random variable y, that is the probability that the random variable y is less than or equal to little y, what I can do is I can look on the y-axis, which is on the uh, vertical axis for the region that corresponds to the values of to the values less than or equal to little y and try to map that region to the x-axis here. So when you do that, you can map that point to that point, you can map that point to this point and so on. So this region corresponds to the values of x less than or equal to g inverse of y. So what does that mean? That means the probability that y is less than or equal to little y is the same as the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to g inverse of y. Okay, so with that, we would have the CDF of y is the same as the CDF of x of the random variable x evaluated at g inverse of y that you can see from here. Okay, so if I want to find the PDF, fy of little y, which is what we want to do in this lesson, I can take the derivative with respect to y of the CDF. But the derivative with respect to y of the CDF, the CDF of y is the CDF of x evaluated at g inverse of y. So that's, that's what I want to find, g inverse of y. 
If you take the CDF, if you take the derivative of the CDF, you find the PDF. So this is the PDF of X evaluated at G inverse of Y. But we have an inner function here. So by chain rule, we need to take the derivative with respect to Y of the inside function, which is G inverse of Y. Okay. And that's how you would find the PDF of Y for, for an increasing function g of x, which transforms the random variable x to the random variable y. What if you have a decreasing function? When you have a decreasing function, things are slightly different. So let's see. Let's say that's x. We have y, a decreasing function, g of x. All right. Again, we want to find the CDF of Y, which is the probability that Y is less than or equal to little y. So if I have a small y here, then I can find a corresponding value on the x-axis that corresponds to that point, and that's going to be equal to G inverse of little y. Okay, we can find the inverse since we have a one-to-one -one function. But the difference here is the values that corresponds to that correspond to the region y less than or equal to little y are to the right of the point g inverse of y. Okay? So if you take that point, its corresponding value on the x-axis is right here. If you take that point, for instance, its corresponding value on the x-axis is here. If you take this point, its corresponding value on the x-axis is here. So the probability that y is less than or equal to y is the same as the probability that the random variable x is greater than or equal to g inverse of y, Okay, which is different from what we have here. And that is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than g inverse of y. But since we first assumed that x is a continuous random variable, uh, it doesn't matter whether you have a less than or less than or equal to. Those probabilities will be equal because of the continuity of the random variable x. So this gives you 1 minus the CDF of x evaluated at g inverse of y. Note this is only correct when you have a continuous random variable x. Therefore, if you want to find the CDF, I'm sorry, the PDF, f of y of little y, you take the derivative with respect to y of the CDF of y, but the CDF of y is 1 minus the CDF of x evaluated at g inverse of little y. Okay, when you take the derivative, you find this is going to be equal to the negative of the PDF of x evaluated at g inverse of y times the derivative with respect to y of g inverse of y. g of x is a decreasing function. Therefore, g inverse of x will also be a decreasing function. The derivative of a decreasing function is negative. So that quantity is negative. So if you have a negative, uh, if you have a decreasing function, the slope is negative. So the derivative with respect to the argument of the function is negative. So that quantity is negative, And you have a negative sign here. So negative times negative, that gives you positive value. So in general, I can combine the increasing case and the decreasing case by the following formula. In general, if the random variable y is given by g of x, and g of x is a one-to-one -one function, it could be decreasing or increasing, then f y of little y, the PDF of y, is given by the PDF of x evaluated at g inverse of y 
multiplied by the absolute value. So this absolute value would take care of the negative here. Uh, and this also works for this side. The absolute value of the derivative with respect to y of g inverse of y. Okay, This quantity here is what we call the Jacobian. And it comes up again when we do uh, bivariate transformation or trivariate transformation. Okay, let's do an example. Suppose we have a random variable x that follows an exponential distribution with rate lambda. So the PDF of x is lambda times e to the negative lambda x. And x is greater than 0. Lambda should also be greater than 0. Suppose y is a transformed random variable from the random variable x. Let's say it's given by 3x. So in this case, g of x is equal to 3x, which implies that g inverse of x or g inverse of y is 1 third of y. Using that formula, I can find the PDF of y to be equal to the PDF of x evaluated at y over 3, 1 third of y, times the derivative with respect to y, the absolute value, of the derivative with respect to y of 1 third of y. And that is equal to e to the negative, I'm sorry, lambda times e to the negative lambda times y over 3 times the derivative with respect to y of 1 third is 1 third y is 1 third. So I can write this as lambda divided by 3 times e to the negative lambda divided by 3 times y. Therefore, you see a nice relationship here. If x is exponential with raised lambda, then y, which is 3 times x, is also exponential, is also exponential, with rate lambda divided by 3.